Good afternoon, everyone. It is Christine here on our final afternoon for this holiday in beautiful Malakuta, and it is coming into dusk, so hopefully the light holds enough for me to make this video. I hope you're having a good day, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Travis is coming for a trot by to say hello. Um, and the yeah, the setting sun is just sort of reflecting pinky coloured across the across the inlet. So I thought I'd give you a quick um, little tutorial of how to make a Yorkshire button, or to make it in this form, which gives you a lovely flat um, flower um, shape that you could stitch onto a piece of slow stitch. Um, so I'll show you also then how to gather them up um, and create a um, Yorkshire button. And a Yorkshire button's a thread or wool um, button that you create with a weaving pattern. Um, and you can make your own at home template. You can buy, I think, templates online. This is just made with some cardboard. I actually just whipped it up today. I've got a larger one as well that I've used previously, but I thought I'd make a smaller one. And you basically want to trace around a circle um, and I like to do it on the cardboard, but also trace it on a piece of paper because with the piece of paper, I can then fold it to basically get, um, you want to get 12 points. So essentially like the points on a clock. So I fold it into quarters and then within the quarter, I um, crease it into three within each quarter, which gives you 12. And then I put little um, lines on it, which I then mark onto um, the cardboard before I cut it out and then I mark them into here and then cut each of the grooves out around the clock as you can see here. Um, I also put a hole through um, the centre as well which you'll need um, in a moment. Um, and then I'm just using a wool. It's a thinner wool, so not a, not a particularly thick one, but I like it because it's variegated. So hello, Martha of my variegated friends. Um, so I'll get rid of this little bit of paper because we don't need that for now. I've got my scissors um, and a pen. Um, and I've just written the numbers on because we'll refer to those when I'm doing the um, first bit of winding on because it can be a little bit confusing when you start, but once you get into it, it works really well. So let me get a length of thread. And I'm, I'll be doing it quite long with the wool. Um, I wouldn't use this long if I was um, just doing a stitching, um, but I'll also, if we run out, which we probably will, I'll show you how to weave more into the, into the design. So I'll just get this little piece out of the way as well. Um, so we're gonna come through from the back to the front and I'm using a tapestry needle. So it's a needle that doesn't have a, um, a pointy end, which you want, um, and it's got a nice big eye as well. So I'm gonna leave a decent um, tail on it because that will come in handy later. And I'm just gonna twist that around my fingers for now. So what we wanna do is we wanna come up from the center to the number 12, go across to the number one, and then we wanna cross across where the hole in the center is. So we're crossing across to number seven and then to number six. Um, actually, no, we're going to go number seven, sorry, and number eight. Um, and then we're going to cross across again at the middle to number two. Cross from number three. And then we go across the centre to number nine. Um, and then number ten. And then we're going across to number four. Winding around number five. And then crossing across the centre again and winding there. So if you have a look at the back now, we've got um, winds across some of the back. By the end, we'll have them across everywhere. So now we're going to go across the center again, um, and we're going to go round here, um, and then we're going to take it, yep, round there, because we don't have a wind there yet. And then we're gonna go across here. Yep, no wind there, so we're gonna wind it there. I'm just gonna get my ones out at the back out of the way. And then we bring it across. So you're basically wanting to make sure at the end that at the back there's one crossover at each point um, and at the front there is a doubling at each point. Still got to do a wind there. And you should actually end, you will, will end up back at um, number 12. So we've now, if you have a look at the back, all of these have a piece wound across them and on the front they're all at double. So now's the point where we come up from number six and number 12's up there. We come up and with our needle, we now um, come under the two threads that are at number 12. 
and we do a single loop under that. And then we come under number 12 plus number 11, which is next to it, and we do a loop there. And now we move around to 11 and 10 and do a loop around that. So we're now just gonna proceed around. This will be the rest of the process. Um, so we're always gonna go around the one that's um, to either side of where the thread is poking out. So even if you put this down and pick it up, um, you'll easily be able to see where you're up to. So we're just moving around and we're capturing both bits of the thread. So again, seeing where the thread is and then we're going under those two pieces either side like that. That noise you can hear, if you can hear it in the background, is Travis having a little chew of his chew toy, enjoying the, the evening air. Definitely cools down a bit in the evening here, but during the day today, it was just brilliant, gorgeous, gorgeous sunshine. It was really lovely. Again, almost had the beach to ourselves. Just the odd person out for a beach walk. Oops, almost went through the wrong one then. So you just keep working around. Starting to get that lovely dusk bird call. And when your needle, when it feels like the thread's getting a bit twisted, you can just hang your needle upside down and it will un untwist itself. Oops. And once in a while, when you hold it the wrong direction, it will hook on itself, but it's easy to just unhook. You want your um, spokes to be relatively tight when you um, do those spokes across. Um, you don't want them slipping, slipping off. And you'll just find your own positioning to hold it in. Um, for me, it's a little bit more difficult because I'm having to keep it on, keep it on camera. But um, yeah, you'll be, you'll find it easier when you're not, not filming yourself doing it. It's very relaxing once you get going because it's something that you don't have to do too much, too much thinking about once you're once you're into the flow of it. You're just following to see where that where that thread is, and then you're just working your way around. And if you use quite a um, a thick wool, for example, you'll get um, around very very fast, and you can make the um, the template as small as you want it to be. working our way around. So we've got a big drive ahead of us tomorrow to get back to Melbourne. So we'll head off in the morning so we can get back by mid-afternoon. Take a break for lunch along the way, probably in the Lakes Entrance. Let's go like that. Back to cooking with gas. managed to get one last little op shop in um, we were just waiting for some takeaway and so um, popped into the, the op shop and got to have another dig in the, the jar of buttons and found some gorgeous um, one that looks like it's been buried in the ground with a really ornate um, look so I'm gonna have to clean that one up um, and then lots of beautiful carved shell buttons they were just lurking in the depths um, it's a massive jar. If you ever come to Melkuta, have to go to the, um, make sure you go to both op shops. Um, lovely, lovely Gale um, from the op shop down near the, the foreshore. And then there's the op shop in the main street that has the big jar of buttons. I didn't find a big jar of button at your op shop, Gale. Maybe I missed it, but um, I love digging in a, a jar of buttons. Okay, so I think we've got enough of a tail here. So what I'm going to do, and then just leave it running up that spoke and then we'll pick it up with our next bit of thread and wrap around. So I'll get another good length of this because we'll still need a fair bit to work our way around. 
Just threading my needle. Let me hold that with my finger. I'm gonna go around, make a little loop with that one. Keep holding that with my finger. And then we're gonna work along our merry way. So I'm gonna capture the other tail, but not capture, well, I suppose it doesn't matter actually, I can capture that one as well. Capture that one there. Um, and then we'll just leave the two tails there and as we work around on the next ones, we'll also capture them um, with this with the spoke and they'll just integrate into the into the spoke. Just keep them out of the way so they don't get caught in the meantime. I'll show you on the next round how they how they fit into the how you capture them. So I'm going to capture it again, both of the ones, as we then go around here. So I'm just making sure to capture those two in the process of um, stitching around. And we'll do a few more rounds going around and we'll keep on, keep on capturing them. So that way they won't, they won't come loose. We just don't want to capture them in the spokes that they don't belong with. So I'll just hold them under there. Might trim that white one because we are going to trim it down anyway. Let's trim them ba both back a little bit. And I'll get hold of the one at the back of again so it's not in my way. Just keep working my way around. So as you can see, it's really lovely when you've got the variegated threads. Um, it gives you that really lovely effect. It's amazing how it does get darker here quicker than in, in Melbourne. Brighter sunshine, but um, darker. So again, we're just gonna come under our little taily, taily bits and anchor them in place. And I reckon we're now at a point where they've had enough, enough wraps that we can trim them, trim them off. Um, and they'll just be integrated into the, into the piece. So you want to keep going around the um, outside until you can't really fit any more of the woven stitches on. Oops, just caught myself. need to do another untangle of my needle let it spin around and untangle well not untangle but um, sort of take the the spinny tension out of it so it's a fun little well, fun little activity great one to just do if you're just wanting a little project that's gonna give you something pretty to put in your embellishment kit or to add straight away to a piece you could pick out um, walls in the color that you want to coordinate with your piece I think I'll be making some of these for the upcoming Roxy Journal of Stitchery 
um, volume four treasure hunt. So I'll make some that coordinate with the colors of my pieces. They are very nice, um, totally handmade embellishment. That looks a lot fancier actually than, um, than you would think they are. Sorry, I just bumped the camera, so you've probably just gone a bit wobbly. It's not you, you haven't had too many Friday afternoon gins. Wish I could have gin still, I can't, can't drink. I have a sulfite reaction to when it's alcohol and sulfite. Weirdly, um, sulfite itself, um, if it's in like dried fruits, I can eat those, no problem, but the combination with the alcohol is a not good. So alcohol and I are no longer acquainted. But that's all right. I was never, never a huge, never a huge drinker. It's nice just to have a, a tipple once in a while. Okay, so I had to move inside um, and I've had to put some fabric on the bench because the bench is too reflective with the overhead lights on it. But I just wanted to finish it off with you. So I've been weaving around the outside, trying not to get my ends caught. Let me just rewrap this around my fingers at the back um, and just doing exactly the same that we've been doing since the start. Wrapping the threads on either side um, where the middle thread is. So I think we're almost getting to the point where um, we can't fit too many more wraps on. just getting way too dark outside so I'll probably just have to edit out that last last bit of sort of footage where it was getting too dark but it's really kind of just repeating what we've been doing all the way around anyway with me gas bagging away let's get a few more back on I think oops I need to just pierce through that bit of thread Okay, let's redo that one. And I think we are probably just about, so I'm just going to do one final stitch around a single one. And now we get to um, unhook them off. So I'm going to just use my, my blunt end of the the needle to just unhook them going all the way around keep my tail out of the way that one you can, can't can almost not see because it's white so just unhooking all of these like that and then we're going to pull it out so we've got our template to use again Here's where you get what you saw at the start with the lovely little flower with almost the petals and you could just um, stitch it down at this point. So you would just take your little um, tail in or you could use that tail as your little stem and then um, just sort of finish that one off at the back. Um, with the buttons, you can either do them um, this direction if you want to and then you would just pass this use your needle to just take this thread back to the back. Um, the way I really like them is with these beautiful ribs on them. Um, so I like to have my buttons out this direction. So the next step, if you're going to turn it into the button, is you can see the threads coming through this one. Um, so I'm just going to then take it around this one. Just keeping my tail again out of the way. Um, and then I'm just going to take it around through each of the loops. So just working my way around through each of the loops. Oops. So what this is going to give you is your cord to gather it in. 
So what you can now do, now you can add stuffing to these, but I won't add stuffing to, to this one. I'll just get it gathered in so you can see how it, how it looks. Um, and you can make them sort of as, as gathered as you want and then you can sort of shape them as, as flat as you want them to be or as, as gathered as you want them to be. Um, and having the second tail end is useful because you can use that to actually tie, tie it off. So you can use that to put your little, little tie in. Um, and as I say, yeah, you can put stuffing in if you want them to really sort of sit up and almost be almost like a rounded ball, or you can um, leave them, them flatter if you're incorporating them into your, your stitchery project. Um, and then you can just, yeah, sort of flatten, flatten them out and that will make a lovely little decorative, um, decorative piece. So you've really got those two different ways you can have them with um, the whole flower um, or you can have them in the lovely little button shape and thanks for watching and hope that's given you some ideas bye everyone